Expectancy creates the atmosphere for your miracle. If you expect nothing, you get nothing. It is the breathing ground for your miracle. It sets the stage for your miracle. Have any of you ever had expectancy about something? Yes. Let me tell you something. When you have true expectancy, there's a joy that comes with it. Yes. Amen. There's an excitement that comes with it. Yes. Many times we don't experience the miraculous in our churches. It's because people come expecting nothing. Oh, I'm preaching now. Y'all ready, ready for me to read scripture? You're going to be lost out. They come because it's the place that I go on this certain day. Yeah. What would happen, Pastor David, if all of the people came into church expecting the power of the Holy Spirit to fall greater than we've ever saw it before? Woo we the mighty, mighty God that we serve. Now, I, don't, I know I don't have to change up here because I know your pastor believes in the miraculous. Yes. He believes in a God that can do anything but fail. Yes, right. I already know it. I've been knowing him longer than a lot of you have. And I know that he believes in the miraculous. Yes. So I'm, at, I'm on good ground. Amen. Honey Rock, yes, sir. are you ready to receive? Yes. An anointing in your life tonight. Yes. My father's house, are you ready to receive yes. a great anointing in your life tonight? Yes. Hallelujah. This is my month. Yes. I'm claiming it for me for the miraculous to explode in my life. Yes. What I'm doing is I'm building faith. I'm building it because it sets a stage yes. for you to move into something that right now you may not be able to believe for. Y'all know what faith is. Now faith, according to Hebrews 11, 1, is the substance of things and the evidence. Amen. So we are building faith. My faith is arising. Not only am I going to receive a miracle for me, for my family as well. Lost ones in my family are going to be saved this month. Now, I'm going to tell y'all why I'm making the decree. If you ain't willing to speak it, you can't receive it. Lost ones in my family are going to be saved. Oh, y'all going now, this month. I don't care where they are in their life. I don't care how they are resisting God. Holy Spirit's going to come up on them in a way to turn down, glory to God, to Almighty God. They may be in a nightclub. They may be in a bar. They may be in a tavern. But the Holy Ghost can go everywhere and anywhere at the same time. They may say they're agnostic. They may say they're atheists. But some of us said the same thing. And God invaded our lives. Didn't he do it? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was bound in sin. I feel led to tell this. I was not even one bit thinking about God. The night that God came to my house, there were drugs all in the house, and I had no intention. Church was not even a word that was being mentioned. I had, I, I, uh, religion... I wasn't looking for it. But that night, God invaded my house. Didn't knock on the door. Didn't ring the doorbell. Come on. Didn't climb through a window. I said, God invaded my house. I was bound in sin, hooked in sin, looking for more sin. Didn't call out to God at all. And God came in my house. Hallelujah. Don't tell me what God can't do. I serve a God that can do everything. When the Lord came into my house, I felt the convicting power. Now, I can call them names now because I have been in this for a while. I felt the convicting power all in my house. 
he had made it to where the people that were living there, they were all gone. And God waited until all of them got gone. Now, I'm going to tell you, this is why I tell people, don't tell me who God can't say. So we got to get your faith up. I said, we got to get it up. I'm in the house and the Lord invades my house. I'm not thinking about God, religion, or church. And the spirit of God comes in the house. Now, I don't even know why I did what I did. But I got down on my knees because it was so thick. It was gripping. It was something I had never, ever experienced before. It was so tangible, I felt like I could touch it. I got down on my knees. And I, and, and I was not rehearsed by a preacher. I don't even know now where the words actually came from, but God. And I said to God, I said, I don't even know if you're real. Can I just tell y'all how, how I was talking? I said, you may be something the white people made up. That's what I said. I said, but if you are real, I need you to change me. To come in my life. Now, this is where the supernatural starts. Yes. This is what I was introduced to. Amen. This is why I preach it. Yes. This is why I never have had trouble with miracles because my first introduction to God was that Jesus came in my house Amen. in the form of the brightest light, even brighter than that light right there Amen. that I had ever seen in my life. Yes. Now, all when I was a kid coming up, they had told us, that if God ever, if you ever came in the presence of God, you would die. So, I, so when I saw the light, I wouldn't ask him for no light to come. I just needed to be changed. Now, I thought, really, that God was getting ready to kill me. Because I had all this, all this mess in my house. And you know what he said? He said, you've asked me to come into your life. He said, I have. He said, I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. I didn't even know what that was. I just know that's what I heard. He said, because I love you. Instantly. Mark says it this way, straight way. Immediately. My desires change. Because we serve a miracle. Working God. I don't care how long it's been that you've been standing for whatever you've been standing for. Don't give up now. I don't care how long it's been since you have laid hold of what you are claiming. Don't let it go now. Can you say amen? Amen. Tell somebody around you, I'm in miracle territory. I'm in miracle territory. No, no, some of y'all ain't said like me. Let me come with y'all. I am in miracle territory. Hallelujah. So I was introduced to the miraculous from the time that God saved me. I never, I never have, uh, I do understand now after 40 some years, up and down sometimes, but God has been good to me. Amen. And uh, when he named it last Wednesday and told me what this month would be, I wasn't looking for that. He just simply asked me a question. He said, what does Mark start with? I said, starts with the M. He said, you name this month. This is what God just said. You name it Miracle Month. So I got three M's. I got March. I got Miracle. And I got Month. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are going to get more involved in your life this month than you have ever saw before. 
Oh, I'm going to get y'all. Uh, faith got to rise. It ain't there. The Holy Spirit is going to get involved in your life this month. Greater than you have ever known it before. In your children. In your children's children. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who has told you what God can't do. You got to do what Jesus did when he went to Jairus' house. They were screaming and hollering because the little girl they said is dead. And Jesus went in. Oh, you're talking about the miracle maker. He went in and he said, what are y'all crying about? They said, the girl's dead. He said, no, she's not dead. He said, she's only sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn. They thought he was a nut. Hallelujah. And Jesus put them out of that house. There's some things that you're going to have to put out of your life this month to get ready for your miracle. The words of doubt, put them out. The words of unbelief, put them out. The words of discouragement, put them out. Tell somebody around you, uh, you got to put out everything that tries to rob you of your miracle. Put it out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As I have traveled, God has shown me the miraculous on many ways. I never will forget the lady that I went over to Baptist Hospital just about two years after being saved. Baptist Hospital now is no longer in existence, but I went there because the family had asked me to go. And I never will forget this. This is my training in miracles. I walk into the hospital. I find out where they are. And they're in a, a room. The family, all of them can't get in there. So some of them are standing out outside and they're crying and they're weeping. And they're, they're saying how much they're going to miss the individual that was there. So I said to them, I, the way they were acting, I said, She's already died? They said, oh, no, she's not died. But she's going to be dead in a few minutes. <laughs> she's not dead, but she's going to be dead in a few minutes. I said, well, I said, I said, do y'all believe that God can raise her up? They said, the doctors have already said that she ain't going to make it. Her heart is really gone. Well, they were all out there. I said, well, can I go in the room? They said, sure. So I'll go in. I go in, and there's a lady that's laying in the bed, and uh, people are around her crying and squeezing her hand, and, you know, and she's just kind of looking away. And she knew me, so I'm walking in the room, and uh, she looks up at me, and she says, thank God. <laughs> and I said, I called her by her name, and she said, thank God that you are here. And I go over to the bed, and you know, all of them are crying. See, people have a, people have a way of setting you up to get you in unbelief, if you're not careful. So I go over to where she is, and I reach down, you know, to, to console. And she says to me, she says, get all of them out of the room. I said, get them out. She said, get them all out of the room. And I, I look at them. I said, do y'all mind going outside while we talk and while we pray? They didn't want to do it. But she said, yes, 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 y'all go out. <laughs> so I go in and, uh, and, and I'm sitting there. And she said, Brother Jerry, she said, they've been trying to talk me into death <laughs> for the last several days. She said, they've had me dead. I've heard them. She said, but I've been rebuking it. She said, because my assignment with God is not finished. She said, God's got more for me to do. 
she said, so here's what I did. She said, they're crying and crying and crying and crying. She said, so I started praying for God to send me somebody who can agree with me that God is going to raise me up. She said, I'm the one that asked so-and-so to call you to get you out here. And boy, she looked at me, man, I'm telling you, boy. And she said, let me ask you one question. Do you believe that God can raise me up? Yes. And it was stern. It wasn't, like, it wasn't like, Brother Jerry, do you believe? It was, do you believe? That God can raise, I said, I know God can raise you up. She said, now we got something to work with. She said, lay hands on me. Now she knew the word. She said, I'm going to live and not die. Lay hands on me. I laid hands on her. I didn't have to pray. She was praying loud and I was. I was just, she was, she took over the prayer. She said, God, I know you're not through with me. I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. She said, now I got somebody who's agreeing with me that that's going to happen. So I know you're going to raise me up. She's praying like that. And I'm saying, uh-huh, yes, you are. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, and something happened. That bed started shaking. It wouldn't hurt. The anointing of God hit the bed. Hallelujah. It was vibrating, and it didn't have no vibrator on that bed. Power of the Holy Ghost hit that bed, and she said, I can feel the anointing in my bones. God raised her up for several more years after that. He disappointed all those that had written her off. He counseled out death. He counseled out all of the attack of the enemy. Because my God is a mighty God. You better look at what the Lord has done. Glory to God. There's nothing too hard for God. Hallelujah. I'm going somewhere, Lord. I'm going to Isaiah 38. I've already preached the first part of the sermon. This is closing. I'm preaching something that is true for me that I hope will help you. Yeah. This month, I'm going to receive a phenomenal miracle in my body. It's already started. Yeah. But Dave confirmed it. It's already started in my body. Miracle power of God has already raised me up. Yeah. Last year was a year of enduring. But I sense the anointing now greater than ever before. Yes. Now, regardless of where you are or what has happened, I just came with a simple word. It ain't over yet. Right. Oh, glory. I don't care what they told you. It ain't over yet. I don't care about the disappointments that have been in your life. It ain't over yet. You say, that's not good grammar. I ain't trying to be grammar efficient right now. I've come to tell you that God sent me with a word to let you know it ain't over yet. What man says ain't the last word. God's got something greater than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to use for typology the book of Isaiah 38. I'm looking at a king by the name of Hezekiah. Yes. Some, th some little facts about Hezekiah. He was 25 years old when he started to reign. Mm -hmm. Young man. He had a desire to get rid of the idols that had polluted Israel, yes. Judah. He had an anointing on his life to tear down the false altars. Yes. But Hezekiah became sick uh -huh. unto death. Yes, indeed. In verse 1, it says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now Hezekiah is about 39 years old, 14 years. Yes. 
he definitely didn't feel like he was through. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him. Now, there's something you need to know about this prophet. This prophet was a mighty prophet of Almighty God. What he said happened. Well, no question about it. There was no question that Isaiah heard from God. The people that were around him knew that this prophet had access to God's throne. And that God and him were on first name basis. Yes. This prophet was sent by God. I want you to watch it. He goes, the Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord. Do you see who's talking now? Yes. Who is talking? The Lord. I'm setting this up because I'm going to, I'm going to show you something about faith yeah. thus saith the lord set your house in order for you will die and not live oh. now god anoints the prophet to go to hezekiah yeah. hezekiah is sick mm -hmm. what would you think about this kind of word yeah. and isaiah comes in and he says Put your house in order, Hezekiah, because you're going to die and not live. God said it. You're going to die and not live. Now, I don't know about you, but if I got news like that from a prophet that was really anointed, that wouldn't be my best day. Thus said the Lord set your house in order for you will die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and he prayed unto the Lord. Now the prophet just told him, get your, get your affairs right. But Hezekiah is not willing yet to take this word as though it's the only one he can get. He turns himself to the wall and he prays to God. And he says this, he said, remember now, O Lord, I beseech you, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect or complete heart and have done that which is good in your sight and Hezekiah wept sore now Hezekiah a king of God realizes some things that God had written concerning his people yes. so he makes a decree unto God remember what I've done in your name. Yes. Remember that I've been true to you. Yes. You know what Hezekiah is actually saying? I'm asking you to reverse this pro proclamation. Yes. I ain't ready to die. Yes. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The reason I'm using this one is because who told him he was going to die? God. Who? And what does Hezekiah do? Preach with me. He turns his face to the wall. He presents his position. And then he weeps before God. Because he knows that if anybody can keep me alive. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. If anybody can change your life, it's who? If anybody can bring you out of failure, it's who? If anybody can start your life all over again, is who? God. If anybody can break the addictions in your life, who is it? God can. God can. Yes. Now, there's something about this that really touches me. Yes. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, 
I like one translation that I read. It says, before Isaiah could get out of the outer court, yes, that's right. he couldn't even get away from where he was. God told him, yes. go and say to Hezekiah. Now, what's the wording? He had already given him one, thus saith the Lord. But it was something about Hezekiah's prayer that God turned the prophet around and said, go back. Hallelujah. See, I'm getting you, I'm getting you there because I'm getting ready to lay something on you. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. And behold, I will add unto your days 15 years. Glory to God. It ain't over yet. Huh? They told you because you went through a divorce that your life would never be the same. But I got news for you. I got somebody that heals broken hearts. It ain't over yet. Somebody told you you've been through a bankruptcy. You'll never be financially solvent again. But I've come to announce to you it ain't over yet. The God I serve can turn it all. Y'all better help me praise. I'm getting my miracle while y'all is about watching me. Children that have gone astray, that people say they can't ever be right. I brought you a word tonight. I said, I got a word for you. I don't care if he's on meth. I don't care if he's on pills. I don't care if he stole everything you got in your house. I've come to proclaim before my father's house that what you've been standing on, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. It ain't over. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. God said, go back, Isaiah, tell him I'm going to give him 15 more years. Prophet could say, well, I done told him he's going to die. You go back and tell him what I said. He ain't going to live forever, but I'm going to give him 15 more years. I've seen his tears. I've seen him crying. He's seen him weeping. He, I've seen his petition. I've seen him pleading. And now I'm going to tell him I give him 15 more years. Isaiah tested it. He needed a sign. Matter of fact, he asked him for a sign. The sundial had a, had a, had a shadow on it. And he said, if I'm going to live 15 years, he said, make the time on the sundial, not go forward, but go backward. If you just reverse my time of death, reverse that sundial. And God gave him that sign. Now, can I come home with you? I don't care how broke you've been, it ain't over yet. I don't care how sick you've been, it ain't over yet. I don't care how despondent you've been, it ain't over yet. Children wouldn't listen, it ain't over yet. Doctors say that you are going to have to uh, have treatment for the rest of your life. I've come to tell somebody tonight, it ain't over. You better tell somebody around you it ain't over yet. Last year when I was going through a real, real time of sickness, and be honest with you, when I was going through that time, at first I was talking to God, and I was saying hallelujah. Some people wouldn't, wouldn't believe me, but some of y'all already know. And I was talking to God, I said, oh, I finished my work. Huh? But I had a group of people that know how to pray. Huh? I'd wake up sometime feeling so bad, but I had some people who knew how to stand in the gap. And they started praying. And they started praying. 
And God said to me, uh, no, son, I'm going to raise you up. I'm, gonna, I'm going to reverse where you are, and I'm going to touch you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Because he was telling me it ain't over. When disappointments hit your life, discouragement comes. Enemy tells you you're going to be that way forever. He'll tell you this can't change. Sad thing is, this is true. Some of God's children listen to the devil more than they do God. Don't leave me now. Huh? They'll tell you everything that the devil is saying. Devil told me I'm going to be by myself the rest of my life. Here's what I ask people when they tell me that. What has God told you? Devil told me I ain't never going to be financially whole. But what does God tell you? Whose report are you going to believe? I don't know about you, but I'm going to believe the report. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I'm going to believe what? Hallelujah. So the Lord said, ain't no need of you making no plans for departure. Because I ain't through with you yet. Matter of fact, he told me, and you might as well stop asking me about coming home. I got more for you to do. Now, how many of you, uh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but how many of you have ever tried to, you can't, argue with God? Now, I got about four of y'all. Let me come on this side honest with God. And I did. I told God, look at what this, look at this and look at that. Look at all the ministers all over the world. Praise God. I know that I have completed my assignment. And the Lord said, no, you ain't. And don't ask to come back up here no more. When we're ready for you to come up here, we'll come and get you. I learned my lesson. There is no failure in God. Little lady I preached on yesterday had had an issue of blood for 12 years. But she did something. She heard about Jesus. Glory to God. Tonight, you're hearing about Jesus. And she said within herself, if I can just touch his clothes, I'm going to be whole. She didn't have no more money left. She spent it all with the physicians. When she got to where Jesus was, there was a crowd around him so thick that it was impossible seemingly to get through. Now, she had a problem. She's considered to be unclean. But she was saying, it ain't over yet. If I can get to that man that they call Jesus. My life gonna change. My body gonna get well. So I don't know how she got through that crowd. I'm not gonna fix it up like I've seen many, but she got there. And when she touched Jesus, something went out of him. And he said, who touched my clothes? His homeboys, disciples, were rolling with him. They said, who touched you? You don't see this crowd here? In other words, they were saying, it's a whole bunch of people touching you. But it was a difference. There was one touching him, putting a demand on what he carried. 
Oh, y'all didn't hear that, did you? I told y'all, expectation is the breathing ground for miracles. She touched him. Virtue came out of him. And Jesus, who touched me? Everybody's touching you. Uh-uh. It's a lot of people touching me out of curiosity. Some are touching me because I'm here. Some are touching me with a wish. But somebody done put a demand on my power. He looks around and he spots her. And she got to come. She falls down and she tells him all the truth. And he says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. You just got something that all of these people could have got but didn't get because they did not place a demand on the power that flows from me. This month, I'm putting a demand. Somebody go with me. I'm putting a demand on the power of God. Everything in my body, Dave, is going to be well. It's already happening. God's already been touching me in a way I ain't been touched in years. Hallelujah. Brother Dave, I had lost 19 pounds in seemingly days. And I wasn't, I wasn't on no diet, y'all. So don't come up to me and say, how'd you lose that weight? 19 pounds just dropped off me. Little do I, did I know that God, when you need it, is a miracle working God. I got on the scale a few days ago and I said, the scale's messed up. It's got me weighing 23 more pounds than what I was weighing. Where did this come from? My God is a miracle working God. So he said, we're naming this month Miracle Month. Whoever will place a demand on my miracle working power. Let me tell y'all something about Hezekiah. Hezekiah literally, and y'all gonna have trouble hearing this. You say, you can't do that. I just read it to you. Hezekiah literally helped God change his mind. Oh, I, 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 I wish somebody was with me now. Isaiah walks in, set your house in order. He knows who this prophet is. Because you are going to die, Hezekiah, and not live. Hezekiah turns to the wall. Isaiah's going out the door. I did what God said. Before he gets out the gate, go back. Y'all hear that? God said, go back. Go back and tell Hezekiah that I'm going to give him 15 extra years. Any doctor that told you what you have is irreversible? God is bigger than his diagnosis. You ain't going to be on pills the rest of your life. God is about to invade your natural with the supernatural power. We've been decreeing for a while. Our dear sister Rebecca, them eyes are going to open. Now, I don't have to talk her into it. She already believes it. 
God is going to touch them. Yes. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So I'm saying tonight, what is it that you need God to change, to reverse, to get involved with in your life? What is it that you need? 